Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm a little under the weather today. Uh, me and my uh, my baby, we got a little bug, so my voice I may cough a little bit here and there. Thanks for bearing with me. This is part two of Pish uh, Daromad Esfahan, and uh, we're gonna get into it. A um, few announcements before we begin. We've got uh, some promotions this month happening, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to put some links in the chat and show you what we've got happening here this month. Let's see if I can get this on the screen. That'd be excellent. Okay, yeah, here we go. Showing up. All right. Well, I'll give you the link in the description. We've got the foundation program special enrollment happening uh, starting today, and uh, there's a few bonuses that you can get if you're one of the first five enrollees. And there's a special enrollment bundle um, where you can save 150 bucks on three of my programs. When you bundle the Oud Foundation program 1, 2, 3, 4, Easy Oud Songs Volume 1 and Easy Oud Songs Volume 2, uh, you can save a lot of money. That's a limited time offer. Uh, it'll be ending on Wednesday. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Let me know where you're from, if you're a beginner, advanced, the intermediate Oud player, how long you've been playing for. And I'm gonna play this piece to recap what we did. Uh, in last week's uh, YouTube live. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. Uh, let's see how this goes. All right. So, oud tuning, first of all. Uh, we've got C, G, D, A, F, uh, sorry, G, and C. So for Persian music, we often tune our fifth course to a G. And uh, the last string is variable, can be C or D. Um, so we're doing Esfahan. Esfahan, the notes are, we'll just recap quickly, G, F sharp, A, B flat, C, D. And then we also have a very sharp E half flat. Not a very sharp E half flat, more of a flatter. Uh, e half flat. It's over here. Okay, and let me play this piece for you so we can get back into it. All right. Two, three, four.
So we, uh, we, last time we went up until uh, the modulation part. So I think we ended somewhere around here um, in the low section where we played. <laughs> last time I better do that here for you guys if you like notes so now this uh, piece features a modulation using B half flat very important um, in that um, in Esfahan sometimes we move from this um, from one mode to another and the B half flat is quite critical in moving toward the high octave so that we can do that modulation on the high octave uh, let me bring up the notes on the screen now this will show up. There it is, finally. Okay, excellent. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so we're starting here, B half flat. So, we can play this on the high octave or the low octave, doesn't matter. <coughs> Excuse me. I do there is I play the D and then I use my second finger for B B half flat or B coron as we call it in Farsi coron is that note there and then add some chords there that little power chord thing it sounds really good then we have an E flat up there so use our second finger So you see how we have this ascending using the coron, and then we have a flattening coming down. Now the rhythm that I play here is one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. I don't play the rhythm as it's written here, one, two, dum, 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 but you can if you want. Now uh, from here we've got goes back to the original mode that A B flat C so we got one two three four so I play tremolo down 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 then we have uh, repetition on the next note below This part goes to the low octave. I like to play it on the low octave so that I can play this modulation, this sure-like melody over here in the middle octave, which sounds great on oud. You can do it on the high octave too, but I prefer it here. So we've got low B bass D there, right there with the second finger, and uh, B coron. This symbol here says to repeat this measure once, and then when it's got a slash in between, means repeat two measures ahead of it. So we play this part twice. All right. Then we have this melody here. So here you can use the first position using your second finger on A, or you can be in the second position using the first finger on A. It's up to you. Um, then we continue on. This melody is derived from Shur or Abu Atta. Um, this is a modulation to Dastga Shur or Dastga Abu Atta, um, however you would like to describe it. But it's a Shur like uh, kind of melody that you have. in, in uh, Esfahan, this modulation. It's very rare in Persian music that we have modulations. 
Um, but in S4 we do sometimes modulate to sure like structure. And then the melody goes back to the main theme. theme melody. So yeah, so this, um, the way that it's been notated, you can switch the octave on the oud depending on what you like to do. What I might do, um, if I'm really performing it or really arranging it for oud, I may do it once in the low octave of the melody. Start in the high octave and then end in the low octave. Oops, I forgot to do it that time. Here we go. Too much. So that is the part two of Pish Daramad, Darama, Pish Esfahan, and uh, this is a beautiful one. Very simple to play, uh, very doable on oud. It's uh, very comfortable position-wise for the key, and um, yeah, it's a great piece to play. Um, so now I want to take some time uh, to answer any questions, talk about oud playing, um, and uh, if you guys have any questions about what I'm doing here. Um, in terms of finger positions and all that. If anything didn't make sense, or if you want to go back to basics, I'd be happy to help you. Um, yeah. So now's the time to get some questions out. And uh, Carol, nice to see you here. Thanks so much for joining. Let me get rid of this uh, notation here. Michael, nice to see you too. George, good to see you too. Um, Gary, nice to see you as well. So George, you're a beginner, uh, had the oud for two months, that's great. Um, Gary, do most ouds come with their own risha? Is there any difference in rishas, like length, to be aware of? Yeah, um, most ouds that you buy, usually they'll throw in some, some risha. You can see here, I'll show you my risha collection. So here I've got uh, quite a many different types of risha. Um, they're all... They're all different. Um, they're all some kind, most of them are some kind of plastic material. Um, yeah, the lengthwise too, you sometimes get some short ones. You sometimes get some wide ones. Like this one, they're, they're about the same length, but one is wider, one is shorter. Um, it just really depends on what you like and how it gets it grips in your hand. The plastic ones are okay, but uh, a lot of Arabic players like to use the cow horn risha. The cow horn risha brings out a lot, uh, different, uh, a lot of different uh, sounds, and it sounds really great. A little bit more brighter, a little bit more crisp and clean. Also very fast playing as well. Sometimes the plastic ones, they, they, the sound quality is not so good. Some of them are good. Sometimes I really like uh, playing with a soft um, type of risha. You can get all kinds of materials. This is like a soft plastic, and some people like it, some people hate it. Uh, a lot of uh, this is usually you find this in Turkey. 
Um, let's see, we've got some other ones. This is by Sultan Instruments. This is a very nice Risha, um, a little bit like uh, almost one millimeter thick. Very nice plastic uh, to work with. Um, but yeah, I like to use cow horn. Today I've been using the cow horn ones and uh, they're great. They last a long time, but they're harder to find. Uh, I would search on e eBay. This is the cow horn. I'll show you the plastic now. This is uh, Sultan Instruments uh, plastic risha. Sounds good too. It's got a bit of a darker tone because it's a bit thicker. Uh, you can get thicker cow horn rishas too. This is a homemade one I've made out of uh, cable tie. It's really fast, like it really everything comes off the string very nicely. It sounds really good too. This one is a bit thicker so you get a bit darker tone too. Um, yeah, lots of, uh, lot of, I'd experiment with Risha's, definitely. Uh, question about the notes. Um, yeah, the notes, um, if you email me, if you email me, I'd happy to email you back the notes. So it's support at uh, oudforguitarists.com. Just email me and I will be happy to send you the notes um, if you're watching this. And uh, yeah, I have it on PDF. Um, you can also... I got it from Instagram. I, I just downloaded it from a, a place on Instagram that was sharing uh, Persian note music. Um, yeah. So some more good questions here. Do uh, let's see here. How long does does a beginner take to learn note positions without frets? It's, it doesn't take very long. Um, you can with m the way that I teach, you can do four lessons, one per week with me and you can learn your first simple song. It does take some people longer than others. Um, it really depends on how much you practice, but you can start learning some of the basic note positions for like C major, um, scale, or makam ajam. You can learn that in one month. It's in, it doesn't take that long, um, but it, it does take some, some patience. Um, now, uh, when it, it does take time to find the quarter tones, the microtones, that takes a bit more time. Um, but it doesn't take very long. It's not something you have to use your ear as much as you use your physical sense of the fingerboard. Um, but I give you exercises so that you can, your muscle memory gets developed. Um, yeah, so that doesn't take very long to learn the, the note positions. Um, and on the oud, you know, most of the repertoire is, is going to be using the first position. 90% of the music uses the first position you use up here. Now, you don't really use all the positions up here so much. You do go up here. You do sometimes go up there. But um, that's, you know, after learning the basics. Most of the basics are all in this area. That's where the oud lives. So, uh, George, you find yourself holding onto the Risha very tightly. Should I hold it more loosely? That's a good question. Um, you want to, you will do both uh, at certain times depending on what you're doing. Uh, I like to hold it with my fingers touching the palm. So it's not particularly loose, it's not particularly tight. Um, I like to have a ball, a fist almost, with my, with my Risha hand uh, so that I can get the weight of that that ball, that fist, has a bit more weight than when you're holding it looser. Um, also, you want to really support it nicely with your index finger on the bottom, your thumb sloping to balance here and give nice support to the Risha. But sometimes you want to loosen up and you'll play with a softer tone. You'll want to tighten up when you want to play with a harder attack. So you can hear an example of this. Um, I'll use this other Risha here. So this is um, loose, holding it loose. This is holding it tightly.
You, you're going to play louder. So it depends on the, the, what you need at, in the context. The looser, um, you want to be a bit balanced, be in a, in a little bit in between. Have a snug um, form. I like snug like this. My fingers are deep into the palm. Um, I'm kind of, my fingers are hugging the risha. Some people, you'll see them, they play a little bit more open. And if that works for them, that's great. Um, a lot, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, but I prefer nice snug holding. Um, and that's just my style, I guess. Uh, some people, they, they feed the end of the risha through their third and fourth fingers. This provides a bit more attack as well. So uh, again, a different, uh, different kind of thing, a different angle, the way that it hits the strings is different. Yeah. 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 So any other questions you have about playing the oud, um, now is a great time. A couple other things happening this month. I have a taksim workshop, which is not necessarily for beginners, but um, it's not too advanced either. Um, even if you are a beginner and you want to join, um, it's still valuable because you'll learn some of the basic concepts of what's going on and you can, if you have a music background, you, you will benefit from it. Uh, let me see if I can bring the link up for that. So again, here's the link to the foundation program, uh, the promo that I have going on this month. Check that out there. Um, yes, lessons. So um, this month, uh, this month as well, I've also got. Um, I'm also doing a promo on a beginner, like uh, not beginners, but new students. A half price price lesson. Uh, you can click the link in the description. You can learn about um, what I teach in my lessons at the blog article. That's first uh, link there. And then if you want to try a half half price lesson, that's only happening. You can only purchase that until the end of July. Um, so it's a limited time offer that I'm doing that. Um, your first trial lesson, if you want to see what it's like doing it on Zoom, all my lessons are on Zoom and uh, it works for most people and uh, it's quite effective. Um, yeah, uh, let me bring up this. Uh, so yeah, that's the, those are the mo two most important promos that I've got. I've got the half price trial lesson and then there is the Taksim workshop. Let me bring that up for you guys. Let's take a minute. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Happy to answer anything today. Nick, good to see you from Sydney. It's awesome. Okay. Link is coming up here. Okay, here's the link to the Taksim workshop. I'm glad you like the sound of this oud, uh, Carol. This one is really nice, really nice uh, playability on it as well. Um, um, I will be, I will have, uh, I'm not really selling it directly myself, but I will uh, be promoting it, um, so to speak, um, with a coupon code. Um, and you can check out these instruments at sultaninstruments.com. For the price, it's an excellent, um, excellent deal sultaninstrument.com that's where you can check this oud out um, they're selling it for a thousand dollars one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars it's a great uh, entry-level professional level oud and uh, at first I thought it looked uh, rather cheap like I didn't really I wasn't a fan of the rosettes but when I got it in person um, I was really impressed actually by how beautiful it looks it's got a very nice a very thin coat on the cedar soundboard it plays like a dream. The pegs are as good as you'll get on any oud. Um, so it's a great, great value. And Yildirim Palabiak himself also um, fine-tuned uh, the soundboard on this guy. Um, great for pretty much anyone um, who needs a decent oud. Um, I will be doing some more um, oud reviews coming up uh, in the next few weeks. 
I've got another oud that I'm going to be showing you guys talking about from Ethnic Musical, and uh, actually, and another oud coming from Ethnic Musical that I'd like to tell you about too. That'll be a higher level, similar price range to um, this Sultan Plus model. Uh, so yeah, so thanks so much for joining me, guys. It was really nice to see you guys here. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, about playing the oud, you can always email me, or you can, if you have some time, just get it and get your question in the chat. Happy to answer anything. Um, yeah, I'll uh, stick around for another five minutes um, if you have any last questions. Otherwise, check out those links about the uh, promo happening for the foundation program if you're a bare beginner and you're just starting out and need some guidance. Um, my online programs are really great for that. Uh, yeah. So uh, get some questions out and then I'll answer in, in, a, few, in a few minutes here. More Esfahan. there's just one more question so uh, any tricks I use for tuning tuning is a really big uh, challenge for for people who are starting out especially guitar players because guitar players are have been spoiled by geared pegs um, and uh, oud pegs are not the easiest to deal with they they contract uh, in the cold dry weather they um, expand in the humid weather so they get stuck and they get loose um, so you're always having to um, what the best, the, one of the biggest tips I have for um, tuning um, is to, when you first, in, you know, get your oud and you want to tune, hold it in between your legs. And uh, what you want to do is you want to support it like this. You want to use this thumb to pluck the string. And that way you can support the neck and then push and turn. Because what people tend to do is they start to turn it and then it gets loose or it's too tight and they can't support the neck and then you could damage the oud or give it undue stress. Um, so you, what, that's what you want to do. You want to get it in between your legs, pluck with one hand the string so you can hear what it sounds like. The tuner you're using can hear what it sounds like. And then, then you can do it like this. Then you can tune it that way. That's a great way to tune uh, for the beginning, for the beginners. Um, then after a while, you'll get uh, used to holding it and tuning it. Um, the oud does stay in tune as long as you play it regularly and you tune it regularly. Then it will find its stability after some time. But if it's a brand new oud, it's gonna take it's gonna take a good month or so. You and you got to give attention to it. You have to tune it every day and make sure that it uh, it stabilizes. The strings get stabilized. If the weather changes, you could have tuning problems again. Um, so it is it is a finicky instrument. It's probably the one of the hardest instruments to kind of manage in terms of tuning. Like uh, when I have to change strings, like I grab a glove um, because tuning the pegs, you know, hurt the fingers after a while. So I use a glove to, to uh, tune, when, especially when I'm changing strings. And I've got to keep tuning, keep retuning and all that. Um, so that's one tip I'd use. Um, another tip, if your pegs are really <coughs> kind of sticky, if they, they're, you're turning them and they make sounds, like maybe you can hear this, this kind of sound, that's normal. Um, but what you can do to minimize that is you can use graphite and put some graphite on the pegs when you change the strings. You have to pull out the whole peg, apply some graphite, it makes it nice and smooth.
yeah, that that's really nice to use. Um, there's other materials that people use to uh, make the strings more malleable. I mean, make the pegs more malleable. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. I'd say um, you do have to tune it regularly, though. All right, thanks so much. If there's no more questions, I will uh, let you guys go for today. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining. Check out those links in the description and uh, have a great time. Uh, is there a preferred way to string the oud? Uh, that's a, thanks for asking that. Um, different people tune it, uh, string it different, differently. Um, it really depends on the maker because the way that they, they where they put the hole in the peg kind of determines how you're going to string it up and there's unfortunately there's not much standardization uh, but Turkish uh, makers like this uh, Turkish maker that made this oud they tune first course second course third course fourth fifth and then sixth um, Iranian luthiers they they string it up like a like a guitar, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, just like that in a linear way. Um, it really just depends on on what you want to do. If you get your oud uh, brand new, I wouldn't recommend stringing it up differently, just because. Uh, just learn where they learn where they go. You'll it doesn't take that long to remember um, where the strings go. But if you get it, sometimes some Arabic luthiers they do things differently and uh, so you may have different configurations um, you can change them to the configuration you like the most if you want um, there's there's no real rhyme or reason anymore as to why they are stringed a certain way I don't think so anyway um, yeah so there's different ways you can do it all right thanks so much guys uh, if you have any more questions any questions about the foundation program uh, hap happy to help you uh, yeah, so let me know. Alright, have a great uh, rest of your evening or day, wherever you happen to be. And uh, we'll be in touch again. Thanks so much. Bye.